live. We're live. We're live. Hello, 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 hello. What's happening with your Facebook world? I'm an FB fam doing. As you see, we're in a little cozier environment today. Uh, very much, we uh, we're in the transition of a new home. So next show that's going to be uh, coming up, we will be in our new studio. Uh, with a new face, so as we see, we just need to go ahead and put a little backwards action up there for exactly. you, so the people around us can uh, be able to see what we're doing here inside. We're actually in the Cedar Chavez Library here, broadcasting live in Phoenix. So you know we're getting a little crowd out there, so we want to just go ahead and keep it buzzing. They want to know what's the know is. So if we talk loud enough, they'll be able to listen in. Exactly. You know, so exactly. I know you guys are like, who is that guy behind them? We'll let you know in a minute. Yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my man, as always, AP. Go ahead and do your thing, man. So, welcome back to another episode right of The Greatest Show Ever. Yeah, was that? Yeah. Uh, okay. like, Aaron likes to be half-faced on <laughs> shit. I'm making him bring his ass. Right. So, see, see, look, you just sliding over. Look at you sliding back over to the left. See? Slide, you know, slide to the right. <laughs> slide to the right. All right, go ahead. So, again, welcome to another episode of The Greatest Show Ever. Um... Today we're going to have the sweetest show ever because we we're talking about diabetes with a diabetic. That's right. Sweet me. Sweet me. Right. Got a couple facts and statistics. And, and and my only things. personal experience with diabetes is uh, my grandfather developed type 2 diabetes in his later years. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's about the extent of it. And myself, uh, I got a little closer story with diabetes. Um, it does run in my family. I've had two family members that have passed away uh, due to diabetes, so it's very dear to me. Um, and it's definitely not something that uh, we should just be taking lightly in any event. Our body is our temple, and when you know where I can go get a new temple at, please <laughs> pass that information along. So. Uh, they're called avatars. Right. You know, that, yeah. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's now the avatars. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, are we going to, how are we going to recap on the well, last thing? Yeah. Or or we'll I just want to say, we'll um, do. We, the reason we, we picked this topic, because um, as, as you all know, this show is a show on issues pertaining to black and white. Right. Right. And how, and how we perceive things differently. So, we picked diabetes because it's a common ailment mm -hmm. in all communities. Black, white, red, yellow, purple, yeah. indigo. You know, it, it's, just, it's just one of those things right. that we need to know about. And there's so much miseducation about diabetes. Mm -hmm. And there's a, lot, a lack of information about diabetes. Um, a lot of times diabetes can just be that person that we just don't know. We just never met, but it's, it can actually be closer uh, mm -hmm. to us than what we may think because not something we're not necessarily born with is something that we can actually just develop or you know sometime within our life due to our diet so right. you know uh, which leads us to that great man that's sitting in between us in the back is basically one of my one of my best friends here you know so actually today's a good day because I'm with two of my best friends here so if y'all didn't know you know both of these gentlemen in a side note right now I'm gonna just share this and tell the world yeah, they were in my wedding day. They can dance. <laughs> we might not believe it, but I got the video. <laughs> I got the video. We're not going to talk about how much alcohol was in the system at the time. But um, they can dance. They got two two feet on them. That's so, right. you know, two, I got... Two left ones. Right, 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 right. I was trying to keep it clean, you know. But if you have seen two left feet move simultaneously in rhythm... Yeah, we got that right here on the right. show. So, right. without any ado, this is my this is my man, also my mentor, uh, like my big brother as well. It's my boy King Saber. Uh, so that would be me. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that would be me. Has a has a story to tell about this 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 topic of diabetes. So uh, right there, we're just gonna go ahead and let you tell your story, son. So um, you wanna. Is he good enough? You want to yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, can y'all see me? Yeah, yeah I, can, I can see me. I'm, I'm a handsome dude. I ain't afraid of the camera. That's for real. So, yeah, uh, you know, speaking with Lavelle and AP, you know, um, we were having a conversation about this being a hard topic. I guess they do hard and soft uh, topics on the show. Um, 
And I wanted to speak on at least this particular topic, diabetes, because it is near and dear to me. And uh, I'm battling with it every single day. Um, so to start back, um, Aaron mentioned that his grandfather in his later years got diabetes. I think the misconception or the miseducation that a lot of people, a lot of us do not know is that diabetes is passed from the male in the family hmm. to the children. So you can be born with diabetes. You may not have the symptoms of diabetes right away, but it's in your genetic makeup if the, a male individual in your family had diabetes. Hmm. My father had diabetes. So all of his children had, are susceptible to diabetes. Um, all of my children are susceptible to diabetes, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, I didn't know uh, until a, a few years ago when, you know, in college and we were studying the anatomy. Um, I'm an anthropologist uh, by degree. And we were studying the anatomy of the human being, and um, that's when I learned that diabetes is a genetic something that could be passed on. Mm -hmm. um, now, that being said, and being armed with that information, you know, it, it now starts to become our responsibility to take steps to learning how to eat to live. Most of us eat for comfort and for enjoyment, but we're eating to die. Question, because I want, I want, I want them to hear your story. Mm -hmm. You know, and you told me one thing how when it came to the point about the injections. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, at what what point were were you officially like diagnosed? Like, I have to. I was eating like this. Tell them how you how mm -hmm. you know we used to mm -hmm. get down, mm -hmm. and then no lie. Yeah, like how, how did you over, find out overnight his diet just changed, changed. Mm -hmm. and, and everything in his world just changed. And, and tell him, yeah, tell him, tell him that story. Now. All right, so. I used to bodybuild and lift weights, man. And, and, and in America, everything that's large is supposed to be great. Like you, all of us movie superstars are overly muscular or overly large, right? That To us, that's a symbol of power. I didn't know at the time that when I packed all that weight, I was 230 pounds, and most of that was muscle. And I didn't know at the time that I was really pushing my body to the limit because it couldn't create insulin. Mm. Insulin is what fights off or balances the sugar levels in your body. Mm. Um, in the meantime of all of this, I met my wife. Uh, my wife is a naturopath, medical doctor, Dr. Hanifa Muhammad. And when I met my wife, well, we were dating, and then one day she told me, she says, you're urinating a lot, like a long time. And I used to always think because I drank beers, man, I was drinking waters, I was drinking everything, right. and I was just peeing because I was full of liquid. Oh, I was drinking water, I know. Yeah, you know, so I, I didn't know. realize that um, that uh, that was the first symptom of uh, high blood sugar mm -hmm. and diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, so my wife being a naturopath, she said, let's check your, your blood sugar, and we had my blood sugar checked, and it was like 290. Mm -hmm which is extreme, wow. right? So That's that crazy. was the first symptom. Right. But even with that, I still didn't slow down on the donuts and the bagels <laughs> and all the other good shit, you know, steaks and fatty foods. I was just right. having it all. Cause chicken? Thinking, man, Ch man, I'm a fried chicken. Man, dude, I love man. It. <laughs> hey, them chicken, I ain't gonna lie, them chicken wings, we used to go and get them in bastards. Man, bastards, man. man. We were in bastards, man. We was in bastards so much at the deli for that chicken, man. They knew us by name. Knew us by name. They had my order made <laughs> yep. already. Chicken. You know, but uh, for me, the real telltale sign and the biggest thing that made me say I needed to take this extremely serious is I was driving down the street one day and I couldn't see the street signs. And I thought, wow, man, maybe I'm tired, you know? So I'm rubbing my eyes and, you know, then the next day it was the same thing. I couldn't see the street signs. So uh, I went to get my eyes checked and the... Um, I doctor was very alarmed because uh, she was saying that I had the onset of a glaucoma and there was retina bleeding in my eyes. So that scared me because, you know, um, I like to see. I mean, right. I mean, I don't want to walk around blind, you know, so uh, I went to see an ophthalmologist and then they did another check on me and uh, just determined that I had diabetic retinopathy. 
which is the which is the um, the retina in your eyes or the, 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 they're not strong enough to support the function of what they're supposed to do in your eye, so they're bleeding. So you had diabetes in your eye. I got diabetes throughout my entire body. Well, and, and really, that's and, one of that's, that's one scary. of the that's one of the that's one of the side effects of diabetes. Mm -hmm. You got di you can lose your eyesight. Mm -hmm. You can become impotent. You can die from a diabetic heart attack, which I did not know. Um, uh, so there's so many ways you can lose your limbs mm -hmm. um, that diabetes attacks you that we really don't recognize, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes until it's too late. So I go in, I go to um, to uh, to see the ophthalmologist, mm -hmm. um, Doctor Paula Jawala is his name, Cool Paula Cat, Jawala. Cool Cat, Word. and uh, so I went to see him, and then he says, "You, I'm going to do these injections in your eyes. We have to do these injections." every month for at least two years. Everybody's a little different, he says, you know, so maybe a little less for you, maybe a little more, but the typical average is two years. So just imagine, I have to go sit in this room once a month and I get this, I come in and I sit down and put these eye drops in my eyes that starts the numbing process. Ooh. Then he comes in and then he numbs. You ever go to the dentist, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, uh, uh -huh. the okay. brain, you know, How long is the needle? Man, I don't even really look at the needle. Bro. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you had to look at I don't even really look at the you needle. You had Dude, there's no way I can sit up here and say, okay, you about to put something in my eye and it reminds me of Minority Report. Remember with Tom Cruise and Minority Report? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That dude took the antibiotic, slapped it across his face, yeah. pulled the needle. I had to look at the needle, man. I yeah. had to. It's just, yeah. it be like, okay, you about to stick that six inch needle. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. you know what I mean? You could, you could. Yeah. You, I didn't even know psychologically, man. <laughs> so I see the needle when he uses to, to, to numb the eyes. Right. Then he comes back and he's at these other knees. And I see him when they set him down. Right. So basically, they're probably about that long. You know. That's long. That's like and, um, uh -huh. That's like a three-inch And But it's a very thin needle. Right. And so what they what he does is he puts these, you, you know the cartoons when you're real tired and put the, the, the toothpicks in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your eyelids up. A clockwork so, orange. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he put so he put these little plastic things, you right. know, in the eye. Most uncomfortable shit. Right. Then he had me look yeah. up. Then he sticks the needle in. I can see the needle. I try not to look at the needle. <laughs> Mentally, I don't want to flinch, right? Because this is my eyeball. Mm. And uh, so then he does the injection. And in the process of the injection, you can see the liquid go in. So there's a rainbow effect inside your eyes. You know how you look in water in a puddle? And you got oil in the yeah. water in the puddle. How it got the rainbow right. color? That's you exactly it. That's yeah. what you see as he's putting that medicine in. You can see it go and start going in there. And then wow. all of the dead retina that's in there, those wow. veins, you can see them floating. Right. Because they're, they're, they're loose, right? So I do that once a month. Now, it's been going on since January of 2018. Wait, they don't numb you or anything? You don't yeah. take a pill to get... No, 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 no. You stick a needle in your eye to numb you. So, first is, is eye drops. And, and you had them like a champ. Like, you don't... How to, you just weren't nervous? Scared nervous as hell. Every time I go. Okay. That's my eye hole. Man, man. I, I, I'm, I'm part That's of my French. Man. I'm damn near crying. Oh, don't, don't fuck up. Please yeah. don't fuck up. It's a natural reaction to go. Right. It's no. natural. You're going to be like, you want to flinch. You want to move. Right. You all that. But yeah. you, you, but you, you so. have to lock yourself in. Whew. So I go back to the military. When I was in the military, I never Whew. went to the doctor. My company commander had to arrest me. Mm. And take me to the doctor. I never went because I don't want to get shots. I just right. I'm good. Yeah, I, don't, I got needle things. Yeah, too. so <laughs> yeah. So to be able to sit down and not squirm, and um, and have this gentleman stick this medicine in my eyes, mm. Mm. you know. Um, so 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 the mm. the motivation for being able to sit there for this this eye injection is the fact that I want to see. Right. True. That's that's True. straight up. I have young children. I have a beautiful wife. I have beautiful friends. I like to see. I'm I'm a I'm a spoken word artist. You know. Right. I perform. You know. So I like to see my audience and and the people that I'm interacting with. Right. Okay. So I got a few questions in regards to things. So um, I'm still stuck. Big, the big the biggest one is um, do you get mad or frustrated when you see fat people eating 
the sweets and junks that you can no longer have. Or <laughs> 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 when they order the numbers so they get a diet coke. So, so in the beginning, yo, for real, like, what the fuck, a diet coke? Right, right. A, a diet that coke? Is. So 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 in the beginning, man. I, yes, I, yes, I did get a little envious of those people because I'm like, how the fuck they get to eat all that? And I can't eat it no more. Right. But so so I had the saying, man, when I was working, um, and I go to work. I say, I tell people, I'm coming to work to cheat on my wife, right? My wife being a natural path, she's got me on a straight right. diet. Oh, of, of, diet you know, wise, people right. cheating. <laughs> diet, diet wise, not, 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 not the physical. <laughs> okay, we just with anybody wanna, else. Let y'all know, know that. Just right. I cheated on the diet the that my diet. set up for me. The food that he is <laughs> chewing on. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Let's clear it up, baby. Right. I, ain't got, I ain't got no Nobody's side. cooking. <laughs> Nobody's cooking no for him. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's where like the fried chicken and the donuts and all that. And people always bring the stuff into the right, workplace, of course. you know? Right. And man, oh, so man. so it's like taking it's like man. taking a crackhead into the crack house <laughs> right. and telling him not to Touch the crap. Right. No, drink I mean, water. Drink, yeah. yeah. So. Right. <laughs> they just sit here. Like. So, so to get back to what you to your question, yeah, I, I did get a little jealous and envious in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But then I, I said, well, because this is for my health, and from a health perspective, let me look at it a little differently. And being a public speaker that I am, and being married to a naturopath who is community oriented, I said, how can I take this envy and this jealousy of not being able to eat that anymore and turn it into a positive, not only for me, but for the people that I'm seeing eating this food that is ultimately killing them, right. whether they know it or not, right? So I was jealous, bro, for real. It took me a long time to walk away from those donut boxes when they come in. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I, I mean, love donuts. I mean, my man would tell me, we would go, not only would we go to Bastards to get the fried chicken, we get donuts. the bakery spot knew what kind of donuts right. I wanted. Donuts, you know what I mean? for real. We like the bully, man. Look, cops ain't the man. only ones that like donuts. You know the glades and you know the, the cinnamon swirls. Right. Man, the maples. Right. See, there's some that have overdone maple, then they got light maple, oh, yeah. and they just put the right amount. Yeah. Not too much maple, because yeah. it's like you get yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. They put the right amount of maple for them donuts, man. I, yeah, yeah, we, we so, respect. For those of you out there who, who don't know, uh, when, when Val and I do the show, we do what we call craft services. So we right. have little snacks and stuff for like either beginning or after, or sometimes even in between, uh, that we can munch on our stuff. So this time, because we know what we're um, coming into for the show, right. we had to specifically ask, what can we bring for craft services for you? Right. Right, because normally we, we do donuts or pastries or the, the, the exact kind of stuff mm -hmm. that you know we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So this time around, we brought strawberries. Oh, who don't like no strawberries? Some whole, uh, hide the logo because we don't, we're not getting sponsorship from them. Right. So we got some uh, all natural roasted unsalted almonds. Right. And then and some strawberries. And then we'll get one more. Wait. I don't know if you can have them or not. Oh, yeah. No. So you can't have cheese. So I guess I brought this for myself. Yeah. Some, spring, some string cheese. And me because you know I cuff yeah. up some string cheese. And right. it does have, even though we're not getting sponsorship for no, them, no, this no, is a good no, show. No, um, no. It has the Incredibles. <laughs> So, um, we really wanted to introduce, you know, basically how how hard this this uh, topic is to us. When you say the top ten leading causes of death amongst men, not just black men, white men, you know, Mexican, Asian, all that, no, just men, period. Diabetes is listed as number seven. So, this isn't a one-sided thing. Um, we have symptoms on both sides for men and women. We definitely encourage you to take this and, um, take this to heart. Um, definitely um, hear how diet, so like we're about to get into is diet because that's what we are talking about food um, now. So from the normal eatings of, when I say normal eatings of whatever we like to eat, as far as us being free in our diet choices, um, what is it that you're you can't eat now and you must stay away from because like you say you got to the level where you have to take eye injections mm -hmm. that that lets you know that it's just not something that's you know in the beginning stages um so 
you know, as, as do you worry about having a setback in your in? But I, 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 I do, I do worry about that. I mean, I've had a setback because going back to the eye injections and Dr. Paula Jawawa, my eyes were healing extremely fast mm -hmm. to the point to where he was a little shocked at how quickly my eyes were healing. Right. So he said, okay, great. We're above schedule. Let's back off. Instead of coming every month, let's come every other month. Mm -hmm. So we did that. The next time I had went in, so it was like two months since the last shot, my progress regressed. Okay. Right. So, but within that, I also have to take responsibility for the fact that I went a little happy mm. and I started binge eating on sugar again. So, okay. so the responsibility is on all of us. Mm -hmm. I can't tell anybody or make anybody eat anything that they don't want to eat. It's up to that individual person. Right. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can do is make suggestions based off of what I'm doing. I don't take insulin. I don't take any medicine for diabetes at all. Mm -hmm. My food is my medicine. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I cut out red meat. I cut out chicken, especially fried chicken. That was the hardest thing in the world for me to cut out. Is it just fried chicken or fried foods? Fried foods, period. Okay. Anything with breading on it. Right. Right. right? So what we don't understand in a misconception in America is, is that you get protein through that is the smallest amount of protein you get right. is from meat. You get all of your protein through vegetables. Yep. Um, so I had to go in and, and rechange my entire thought process on how I prepare my meals every single day. Mm -hmm. Everything white had to go out. Everything. What's wrong with white? Man, nothing's wrong with white. <laughs> white is beautiful. White is angelic. You know, they wear white robes at church. <laughs> Unless you get to Ku Klux Klan. But yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's just not healthy when it comes to eating. Huh? But it's not healthy when it comes to eating. So Please white fries. rice, white potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Even your eggs. Well, eggs are good. But white uh, eggs, no. Eggs ain't supposed to be white. Eggs ain't supposed to be white. Not a brown. I think it depends on the chicken or the bird. They're amazing. I think they're brown. Yeah, they're all colors. Some are blue, some are white. But mm -hmm. all colors are beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're like they rainbow. are. I'm like going to They're supposed to be brown. Like a rainbow. But, <laughs> but, but, so, so, I had to also get in the habit of no nuts. Peanuts turn into, the fat and peanuts turn into sugar. The right. fat and meats turn into sugar. The fat. So I had to start really saying, well, what the hell? What, what can I that, eat? Repeat that again. He just said the fat in meats turns into, sugar. turns into sugar. So understand, meat can contribute to diabetes. Okay, we just put a correlation right there. We just broke, broke that right down. Meat can contribute to fat in meat. So, you know, I just want to, a lot of times people just think, oh, you're having too much sugar. That's the cause of how you get right. diabetes. Right. No, it does come from meats as well. Right. So, right. you know, there's a little education in that message right there. Right. So you, you definitely have to be mindful. So I do, I, I love peanuts, and I had to really stop doing the peanuts, and I had to do mm -hmm. research on the peanuts only mm -hmm. because they turn into sugar. Right. Most of all your nuts, especially the bigger nuts, turn into sugar. Mm -hmm. They have, um, they have the, uh, the fats in them, turns into sugar once you digest. And also it's hard on your body to digest. So instead of doing that, I went to seeds. I do a lot of different seeds, hemp seeds, sunflower seeds, um, uh, almond seeds, I mm -hmm. mean, uh, uh, pumpkin seeds. Okay. Uh, uh, so I, I look at those and um, and eat those when mm -hmm. I get the urge of wanting to um, snack on something sweet. I do fruits, mm -hmm. um, all sorts of berries. Mm -hmm. Now understand that the fruits also are very sweet, but they're naturally sweet. Right, I was natural, natural sugar. Right, so right. it's a natural sugar. Right. It's a different process in your body. Right. So I think my wife had told me at one point that the human body should only consume, I think, nine grams of sugar a day. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Now we typically go out to eat and we get a large whatever, and it's a thirty-two ounce soda or a diet coke. Which still has sugar. <laughs> so, you know, um, so you, you have to look at what you're consuming. So right. your body is on that. And again, I, I check my facts on that, but I think it's nine grams in a day. Right. right. Mostly we'll drink 70 some odd grams in a bottle of soda. Right. So that's right. So how much time? You know, so we're over consuming sugar in our diet. 
So then what about sugar-free products? Uh, so they use a substitute type form of sugar within a sugar-free product. So right, but it's, it's sugars that it's not digested or consumed by the, the body. Right, but it's also harmful to the body because it's right. not digested or consumed by the body. So right. it sits there and it destroys your liver. Right. So which is also another way of processing the things through your body. So now you're not processing what you need to process. Right. So the, the, the greatest thing you can have that, that does not contain sugar is water. The next thing you can have is unsweet tea. Oh, not 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 to promote them because they're not sponsored. Yeah, that's not right, right, yeah. right. But yeah. but drink, but drink. We'll show uh, that label. That's right. Make these fingers right. strangle. Uh, you know, so so drinking uh, water. Um, I, I do infuse water. I do berries or whatever in my water. Oh yeah, of course. Um, mm -hmm. You know, add a little uh, flavor to it yeah. or whatever. Um, unsweet teas. Um, now, what I did find out, I'm a coffee drinker. And I did find out that coffee can inhibit the insulin in your body to work. Sure. So if you're already diabetic, they say do not no. drink sure. coffee because it, it, it will help. Yeah, it's a diuretic. It's a diuretic. Right. It will mm -hmm. help kill you. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm still working on it not drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all a work in progress. But also the discipline that had to come in mm -hmm. with my diet. Mm -hmm. So I went to a one meal a day. Was that hard? It was difficult as hell because you know I would be right. fasting doing Ramadan. Yeah, you're you not. Know. <laughs> True story. <laughs> you know your friends are not supposed to get on your nerves. We all go through things. This man was fasting through Ramadan. It was a couple days he had to do this. That's like seven days for Ramadan, right? That's day thirty days. Thirty days. One, he was all right. Day two, he was cranky, and I noticed some shit. I was like, man, he's a little short. Day three. <laughs> Mm -mm. I ain't even fuck with him. Oh, five and six, no lie. I try to say, hey, peace, God, peace, peace, Almighty. Like you know, I had a bad, bad rest, bad sleep. We get a conversation. I try to say something. He cut me off. I try to he cut me off. God, you mad at me or something, man? What's the problem? You know, he was like, no, nah, man. My bad, God. I think it's just Ramadan again. I said, oh, yeah, you ain't been eating right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not fucking with you for three more days, man. <laughs> I left him alone, too. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> I'll see you. Peace. Keep it walking. <laughs> so, so, so fasting, fasting is a great fasting way to control, you off. to control your... Uh, mm -hmm. your your body sugars mm -hmm. uh, and, and any ailments really within your body mm -hmm. um, you know so I went to a one meal a day concept and, and, and what a lot of people mm -hmm. mis, mis uh, interpret when you say one meal a day it sounds like I'm just going to eat like if I eat at, at nine in the morning then that's right. it for the day right, right. so basically I break my yeah. fast in the mornings with um, with berries um, and seeds mm -hmm. I don't eat in fruit I don't eat any fruits or berries after two o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, okay. For the rest of the day. Okay. Because again, they've got a lot of natural lot of sugars, sugars in it. Right? So I need my body to process that sugar. Okay. So I do my meal typically between two in the afternoon, no later than seven p.m. I should be done eating before seven p.m. That meal stretches. It's really truly a full four course meal. Oh, so it's a big meal. Yes. Okay. Salad, your main dish, whatever that's going to be of your main dish, mm -hmm. and then a dessert. Yes, I can have a dessert. Okay. But however, the dessert has to be constructed in the fact that it's not right. full of processed sugar. Right. right. 7 p.m. I'm done. Right. So in the very beginning, it was really hard to adjust to that, to accept that, to even wrap my mind around it because we're raised in this country that we have to have at least three meals a day. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything from the time right. we start kindergarten is preaching three meals a day. Right. The food tree is telling us all this food. And when I started looking at the food tree, I was like, wow, it's full of fat. Yeah, that shit's wrong. It's full of fat and sugar yeah, that and diamond, carbohydrates. Don't trust all it. of that That's wrong. is really geared to kill us. And I started to say, wow, so who benefits from that? Uh, Mainly. You got people have to run out and buy insulin shots. You got to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. You go, you know, you got to go get the diabetic strips. Those things are very expensive. Yep. You know, so everyone is benefiting from this bad diet. And right. nobody wants to tell you that, man, if you go to one meal a day, you exercise, you start to learn how to consume your meals, you can overcome just about any ailment in your body from diabetes to cancer. If you take the time 
to infuse more green products in your body. Yeah. Remember you I have said to that. have a lot of greens in your body. Right. Remember I had that uh, one couple shows back when it began, it was, it was talking about our alkaline foods. Mm-hmm. That's right there, them greens. You mm-hmm. always need greens every day. So so even if you're going every to be a meat day. eater, I'm not going to tell you not to eat meat because I, I still do fish, and I do fish for the omega-3s and, 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 and oils. And, right. Mm-hmm. Um, good brain food. Good brain food, exactly. How do you prepare so, you, you put I, it on I, 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 grill I grill it, you know, I right. grill it, I steam it, I black right. it, you know. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so within within your diet and within um, bringing in these veggies and within the time structure that you have in there, within adding your exercise in there um, to help regulate and control what you're doing, you start to see that you're going to start to slim down and turn right. down in your body. Not only does your energy level rise, um, your mental awareness becomes sharper. Right. You start to really notice mm-hmm. when you go into the grocery stores. Like I walk into the grocery stores now and I see nothing but death when I walk in. Right. And, 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 and it's almost crazy that I say that, but when you look at all the processed foods. Are you talking about the foods or the people? Both. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Both. Yeah. I was thinking both. <laughs> <laughs> because we are so in tune. Mm-hmm. Like I can speak for the black community, from my aspect of the black community. We're raised on quote unquote soul food. Right? Yeah. Usually sweet potatoes or some kind of um, yeah. mashed potato or potato mac and rice, cheese. mac and cheese, Whew. gravies, all that. All that's fat. Mm-hmm. All of that's all fat. That mac and cheese is some kind of fat. Mm. Cheese is fat. Yeah. Mm. A lot of vegetarians eat cheese, but cheese is fat. Mm. It's not really good for you. It is. Um, some, of your, some of your softer cheese, cream cheese, goat cheese, that's a right. better for right. you. You know, so but the idea is really just to start consuming food that's going to help you live, mm-hmm. right? And also, for a lot of men, when we hit our forties, we start to find a little decline in our erection, right? It gets a little softer, and nice, so a little softer. But right. when you have diabetes, it can actually disappear. Now I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Son, well, I'm just going to say, just a lot of men out there, you know, play. that no, deal no, with it. No, no, no understand. Viagra is a Some, huge. Understand it. Sometimes it's more of a hold up than a stick. Right. 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 right, right. <laughs> <laughs> No, but no, uh, as, 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 a, as, a, as a, you know, just an just a, a issue for a male, I do understand. What right. You, no, right. no jokes, no pun. Right. You know, the, the I, sugar, I man, sugar kills that. The first thing, man, if, if you start mm-hmm. to have problems with that in the bedroom, man, mm-hmm. check what you're eating every day and start eliminating the sugar. And, and, and you, you can't do it all at one time. Right. Because right. you will put your body in a shock, right. you know what I mean? Right. So for me, I started with sweet drinks. Mm-hmm. I start. I limited those those first. I stopped with sodas. Actually, um, well, when I embraced is when I re went back into and and, and and re-embraced Islam. I walked away from the alcohol, mm-hmm. you know, um, which has got a lot of sugar in it. Right. Mm-hmm. Then I started with the sweet drinks, and I started getting rid of those, um, and then it started working on pastries. Which was really hard because I love pastries. <laughs> so nice. I've been able to walk away from the pastries, and then it came to cookies. And oh man, I love it. You still smell it? Right, right, right. Now let's go that way. I can smell, <laughs> you know, I can smell that yeah, pastry. Man, so 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 small steps, baby mm-hmm. steps to get you where you're trying to be. Again, I mentioned earlier, I don't take any insulin. I don't do any type of medication for my diabetes except for the injection in my eyes, so mm-hmm. I can keep my eyesight. Right. Part of the speed of recovery with my eyes is the fact that I've changed my diet to the point to where it's almost non-existent of sugar. Almost, I say, because I do have moments where I get upset, I want to go grab something comfort, and I got to get rid of that. So. Well, and and, and what every and this is such a hard thing to believe is if you really do change your diet, you do become healthier. Right. It's so much. It's like no, nah, I'm nah, not really. You hear all the stories. I'm not simple. Right. Right. But then you hear the struggle. It's not an easy thing. You, right. It's right. been what two years? Two now? years. Right. Yeah. Two years. And I remember the day when when he told me that. I was like, oh man, I can't, I can't, I can't have, I can't have this. You see what I'm saying? The reason I can't. I'm gonna tell a quick story. You remember mm-hmm. Eva? Mm-hmm. When was I living with you? I remember. Eva is this lady. That we knew at Liberty at, at our previous job, okay? No lie. We knew she she had diabetes. She was type 2? Type 2. She was type 2. There's two types of diabetes. Mm-hmm. Type 1 and type 2. One produces insulin. One, your body can't produce insulin or uh, let it work it. Um, 
Um, so we we seen her Friday. She always goes out to the club. Ever since she had diabetes, she was diagnosed. She never changed her body. She never changed her lifestyle or nothing. She said, hey, this is how I live. This is how I'm going to go out. This is how I'm going to go out. She had two boys, okay? Um, it comes to Friday. Her and her girl, Carol, going out. And we was like, man, you going out? Man, be safe, you know. Just be safe, Eva. You know what I'm saying? And we'll see you on Monday. Monday came. Eva did. No lie. Come to find out, that weekend after the club, she went out to the club, went home, she passed away in, in her bed at the house, in her sleep, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, her her boys had found her. Tragic situation. But that's that's the, the real effect. When I saw somebody on Friday, came back to work and didn't see him on Monday, that shook me a little bit. When he told me about his story, that's what came to my mind. It was like, you can't have this. Mm -hmm. Too young. To, to to deal with this, to live like this. You see, so when we have our peers and our peers are in a situation, take heed to that. Take heed to that. Be there for them because you never know if that may be you. You understand, with your peers, you do a lot of things that your peers do. Your friends, you have like things in common, okay? Not all bad habits, but eating habits. You may go out and drink together, but take heed to that. That's just... It's it's easy to be a, a fair weather friend. It's hard to be right there right, 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 right unconditionally. Right, you know, right. True, that's, right. true. But that's definition of friendship. Right, right. true. You know, right. truly, because it, it's like you know when he comes to now, I don't even offer him. You know, if I got some drink, nah, nah, I straight up. Wait, right? you want some water? Yeah. You know, I tell him you want some water. You know, got got some fruit here. You want? You know, different shit. Aaron come to the house. Hey, you want a drink? <laughs> you know, um, it's just. You, you know, don't even so, have to ask, just pour it. Right. Bring <laughs> <laughs> out the glass of right. So it, it, it's, definitely, it, it's, it's definitely something which we wanted to bring uh, to your attention um, just just overall because this is a fact that affects, this is an issue that affects everybody. Right. And for this issue to be so close to us, uh, we just took this opportunity and, and he wanted to share a story and we just want to provide a platform and to share a story. So, you know, bring a little education to the matter. So, as we roll along, that's the tough part of the day. So, um, we are in a new format. As we say, we have a new format going for the show. As, as you know what we like to do, we talk about our music and we talk about our sports. You know, so, um, we also have, you know, this thing which we have our hard points and our soft topics in which we're thinking at. So, due to time constraints... I'm not going to jump into my soft topic because as we was in our pre-production meeting, the soft topic is actually a real uh, whole nother show. But I do have a horse that I'm going to get on. So can I get on my horse right quick? Okay. So because this what is horse is how me know. This is not a black style. Right. right. <laughs> I'm getting on my black horse right now. Getting on my black horse. So right now it's just things that I see that's that's pissing me off and which which this PC movement shit does piss us off. Mm -hmm. But when you're not yourself, that really affects everybody. That affects who you're around, that affects just how you're being perceived. And you know, we just have a, a place where, where we can vent about this. So I have a couple things which we are gonna have a full show on. First of all, we're gonna talk about the hippo the the should I say the hypocrisy? Hypocrisy. The hypocrisy of Jerry Jones, Dallas Cowboys owner. Okay, that's been around for right. Yeah, you know, right, and, and it just know. He's a hypocrite. just keeps Everything coming. Up. He does. I mean, him and Trump, both hypocrites. But Trump's a little divisive, slick snake in in the fucking yeah. tall grass. So you just gotta cut the grass down so you can see that snake slither. Until y'all cut that grass, you the only thing you gonna hear is, mm -hmm. and you just gonna see blades moving. You're not really gonna know where it's at. Cut the grass, but something else. <laughs> uh, the cost of humanity. Domestic violence, uh, political infractions, uh, we have uh, systematic oppression within the NAACP. Um, so we have Penn State scandal, Joe Paterno, mm -hmm. the Me Too movement, Hollywood, Touchy Fingers, Ohio State, Irv Meyer, domestic, domestic violence abuse, mm -hmm. uh, a Baylor head coach, you know, power. With uh, basically the the rape scandals uh, with the with the football team down there, 
uh, Michigan State scandal uh, with the what was the basketball team right. or uh, yeah the basketball yeah. team well, not only that, and the, the football and the, doctor, and the gymnast the doctor, right the gymnast. that's that's what I was, the, the, yeah. the doctor uh, uh, Larry uh, Basser Basser that motherfucker that's right it was at Michigan State that's a, that that was the one with him um, um, Louisville Coach right. Returno right. and now we have the Houston Astros Robert Usuna domestic violence again at what cost. Do we have this? Do we say, okay, well, the, the money over your dignity, um, the the uh, our 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 perception, how we're viewed, you know, over the crime. It's time that we need to have some self reflection on what's going on. Okay, you know, like I had a conversation um, with my man. Was it last night? That I said it's it's a shame how. We as men, we as women, we as people can stand for something, but when we turn to the right and we see some shit going down, we just say, oh, that's not my business. Oh, I hope they're okay. Um, and then we'll drive off. Right. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. That's, that's enough. Thoughts and that's, prayers. that's all I have to give. <laughs> but first, <laughs> let it be your family that you have no business in. You will be there. Mm -hmm. That's just blood is thicker than water. Mm -hmm. Let it be some old gossip ass foo foo shit that you just give, don't give a fuck about, but you just want to get in just because you want to be seen. You're there. But shit that really matters about caring for another person, empathizing for somebody else, those seem to be limited on limited conditions. Why? Us as humanity, we're hypocritical ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said it. We're hypocritical ourselves. Right. Take a ponder, think about that. Just think about that. We're not going to get into this now, but these are the things that's pissing me off about us. And this is what we're going to have a real yeah. good show about on our next one coming up. Future topics. Future topics. So, so this you is, know. Now, this is my soft topic. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I don't know if you all know, I'm an advocate on carrying knives. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, there are... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just threw that out. Racial stereotype, my bad. I'm going to soft topic. Why? Why? He had to go in. Why? Why? No, this, but there are superstitions when it comes to, to knives. Yeah. That, that, that I adhere to and I, and I... He likes to get close to it. Yeah. So, um, but it mostly has to do with, with uh, knives and friends. Right. Okay. So if you ask to see somebody's knife and they hand it to you closed blade, then of course it has to do with the with the open clip blade as opposed to the fixed blade. If they hand it to you like this mm -hmm. with a closed blade, there's no trust. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. If they hand it to you, if you trust your friend, you hand it to him with the blade open, with the hilt mm -hmm. toward him. Yeah. And that's how they accept it. Right. And that shows trust. Right. But now when you return it, if you return it closed, no trust. you're closing the friendship. Mm. Like you're kind of cutting that friendship. Mm. So in return, you turn it the same way. Again, if you trust. If you don't. And there's a lot of people who, who don't know that. But that, you know. I didn't know it, that. But I didn't know that. That's an etiquette. I just thought maybe it was a safety feature. Like, like but, I didn't want to hand you a sharp right, right, you Exactly. Know I mean? But you trust. That, that's trust. Yeah. Right, so trust. I guess, right? right? Yeah, trust. Oh, I just see Bart Simpson, Homer, Homer Simpson woman. Yo, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Like, so I didn't need to think about it. So that's just that's just the thing. I mean, obviously, when it comes to fixed blade or uh, fixed mm -hmm. blades, that's something you know. So, if they don't give you that knife, then that's like you know, okay. Don't really, know you don't. Here's the question: right. then. What age do you think you should get your first knife? When did you get your first knife? What age? I I bought my own first knife. What age? Um. I'd say 15, probably. 15? Yeah. Was you ever given a knife? Yeah. What age? I think I was about eight or nine. But that was, who, who gave you your knife? My grandfather. Okay. Passed down. Yeah. No, I ain't ever got a knife. So, mm. well, I that's, think that's, I think a, that's a good going into the next section. You know, so. Not, not giving up. It's bought knives. Right, right. If somebody gives you, and you true them to be a true friend, gives you a knife as a gift, mm -hmm. birthday, Christmas, otherwise, you return a coin. Right. Oh, stand corrected. My wife did give me an engraved knife that had her name on it. Yeah. So that coin completes the circle. Right. 
So they give you a knife, you give them back a coin. Damn, I give my grandfather a coin, he's Damn. dead now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like a like, quarter, a dime? It don't matter, a coin. coin. Silver dollar? Okay. okay. What, huh. Whatever you feel is necessary, okay. whatever you have in your pocket, it don't matter. Yeah. Okay. You return a coin. Because we then, don't want to seem cheap. Oh, right. Because if, if you don't, and they give you that knife, mm -hmm. and you don't return the coin, you're kind of cutting the friendship. Again, you're cutting the friendship. Gotcha. So the coin, gotcha. because in the circle, it completes that. I didn't know that. I'm going to have to give my grandfather the coin. Yeah. I'm going to see it. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I mean, he gave me the knife, and he told me don't stick nobody with it. <laughs> it's good advice. You right. Know, I was like, you know, right. But, you know, we did, it, we, did, we did hunting and stuff down in Alabama. You know, I would leave out of New York and go to Alabama. But I carried the knife in New York. That was a different. Sure. Like, right. Like, protection, you know, right. growing up. But, but it was a little Well, and, and many people have asked me, well, why do you carry the knife? Mm -hmm. Now I answer the Second Amendment. Gotcha. There you go. Okay. Right there. Right there. Right. So, as you know, we're going to keep it moving. We have one more thing. Big thing we're going to get into is our music. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. Mine's was the Jimi Hendrix best of experience. Yeah. I was so, like, what? Yeah. This is the Jimi Hendrix? Yeah. I've been bumping with Jimi Hendrix this last month, like last three weeks, you know. So he get in the car, you know, beer, 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 beer. So, you know, I just had to say that Jimi Hendrix is, I don't think, I don't think, maybe because I, li I wasn't living in his era, but. I think he could have been bigger than what he was. Um, he's actually pretty, he's pretty big. big. He's large. But, he's, like, he's large, son. No, no, I know he's large, but coming into he, yeah. my era, I heard more about, you still hear more about Beatles, uh, of you know, those good. past, but he's one of the all times, but oh. he's not, he's mentioned, mentioned, but not mentioned. Because... He is. See, I don't know that. He's not pop. Right. The Beatles are pop. Close to that discussion we was talking about. Yeah, right. Because my man said, my man said he that uh, he was done wrong. He was listed as uh, rock and roll and not blues. Right. Yes. He's, he's, he's actually a blues guitarist, and he'll tell you he was a blues guitarist. Mm -hmm. But he was categorized as a rock and roll artist, which kind of took him out of the realm of where he really wanted to be as mm -hmm. an artist. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because. And it lost a lot of his black audience when they did that. Mm -hmm. Because back in the 60s, 70s, rock and roll was typically supposed to be for white people. Right. R&B was mm -hmm. supposed to be for black people. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jimi Hendrix, um, when, they, when, they, uh, when he blew up on the scene and the powers of beat got a hold of him, they changed a lot of his uh, inner circle, let's say. His right. original band was a black band, and then they got uh, the white guys. I think the black band was called The Experience, and then the white band was the band of Gypsies. Or I might have it reversed. I think it reversed, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah, album is Jimmy and the Experience. Jimmy and the Experience. So that was the white band, and the yeah. band of Gypsies was his first band, and yeah. his first album was the band of Gypsies. Okay. And that was Jimi Hendrix. So, um, and I grew up on, on Jimi Hendrix, listening to Jimi Hendrix, and I was probably one of the only black people in my neighborhood outside of my, my stepfather who introduced me to Jimi yeah. Hendrix. Never really listened to him because it really became he became uh, coveted, loved, worshipped, mm -hmm. emulated. Yep. Most of your rock guitarists now, the first person out of their mouth they're going to say they followed behind right. was Jimi Hendrix. Right. That's why I said, that. and the reason I, I gave him to Val because um, not only is, is he a, a black rock artist or whatever, but he's he's always considered in the top three. Guitarist of all times, mm -hmm. right. um, there, you know. Of course, there's Eric Clapton, right. uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and Jimi Hendrix, mm -hmm. and it all depends on the type of music you prefer right. mm -hmm. and where they where they land. Um, I personally, I I've always taken Clapton out of that top three because I'm not a big Clapton fan. Right. Um, so, but uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan and and Hendrix, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. But yeah. it's, Steve Ray Vaughan is awesome. Oh, he's so awesome. He's, he's a like, twelve string out of his yeah, world. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, that's why. And then uh, I, I got to experience. I can't show you because it's my phone's being used. I got to experience uh, Ice Cube's America because right. yep. most wanted. Yeah, right. Yep. So, oh, uh, my, I, I'm a, I'm a big Cube fan, but the only thing I knew prior to this of Cube was his like greatest hits. Right, because that's just, right. You know, as I guess as a white guy, that's just where you start. Right, right. you right. just get to know what were singles, 
And so this is my first experience as a full album. Right. Which was um, a good experience. And to me, based on that album, he hates everybody. <laughs> Black, white, cops, criminals. <laughs> if you're rich, if you're from the projects, if you're from the hood, it didn't matter. He did not like you based on those lyrics and his songs. He did not like anybody. <laughs> Except for his fans' women. <laughs> that but, that was is uh um I remember he was he was coming on a different aspect of America's KKK. Yeah. He was he was from the reflection of I am that one with the target on my back. Right. You know. That was one of the dopest albums that uh Q did. Yeah, and I can see that how how that was a turning point in the whole um rap culture nowadays like like nowadays it's it's almost more of a, a, an emulation of of that album um uh gun violence drug use womanizing type deal whereas prior to that you know the whole hip-hop thing was the most of some people you know roots and and conscious, uh, yeah it was more conscious and, and open-minded about growth and ex good experiences it doesn't matter where you come from it's about the work that you put into it I'm still, I'm, I'm trying to figure out really over, music now is garbage, let's face it. Um, every trap shit is talking about the same thing. <laughs> one, in, one artist can't put out three albums talking about the same thing. Right. The same thing. And they all like, sound the same. very much alike. You very see, much. so there's no individual voices, yeah. even from coast to coast like it used to be in the 90s. Right. When you had conscious, you had New York artists, but all the New York artists were all different. Right. They right. didn't all New York artists sound the same. Like now the industry, you know, now it's the puppets where the industry says sound like this. Okay. Right. I don't sound like this. Hey, Drake. No Drake, substance. Drake is selling sound like Drake. Right. right. Even his shit, like Drake's shit, just his, sounds his, so. His new, his new album, man, is getting format. all of this praise. And I listened to it when it first came out. I, mm -hmm. I downloaded it. That's what that's what we do. Right. Download. <laughs> right. I downloaded it. And I listened to it. And I can tell you, out of all of the tracks on it, there's probably three tracks that I say I liked. Based off his creativity, his talent, and the lyrics delivered. The rest of it, I think, is garbage. Give me the old Drake. Because, Give me that so far gone. Be, because I, I, old I, I, look at, I look at where... Because back in my garbage, day, and, 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 and you know, I'm old school. Mm -hmm. We dictated what music was going to be. Right. We told the industry right. what music was. Right. Now the industry is telling us and it's right. force feeding us and they're pushing the conscious rap, they're pushing the conscious R&B, they're pushing the conscious rock and roll. Because this rock and roll, man, Five Finger, mm -hmm. five finger uh, Death Punch, mm -hmm. love that band, bro. Yeah. But, but they have conscious lyrics yep. in their music, but that's pushed so far underground yep. that... We're only getting force-fed this crap that they want us to have, right. and it's perpetuating so much violence. The negative and, shit. And, and, and you mentioned domestic. Your next topic: domestic yep. abuse. Domestic. It is so glorified in the music today. The misogyny that's in ex, ex existential. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, choking the bitch out, keeping them right. in the closet and shit, and that's supposed right. to be glorified. Right. right. But in this, in it's sad that he lost his life by. Spitting the same violence, yeah, right? Right. Yeah, Somebody right. came and took him out, right? And it's sad. He was a young dude. I lost a son at twenty one. Right. He, he is twenty one, and I and I feel the pain of his parents. Right. You know what I mean? Because he was a young dude. Mm -hmm. But you got to look at what are you fostering? Right. What environment are right. you creating for yourself? Right. right. You know, I'm a huge hip hop fan. However, now I listen to more underground hip hop and reggae that yeah. been placed in my heart. Right. But hip hop used to command. Yeah. That's it's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's, it's crazy with this industry, man. It's like, you know, now when I talk about music and assignments with him, it ain't even new stuff because it's garbage. Yeah, it's, 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 it's hard. Garbage. It's, and, and that's the same with uh, what I'm doing with, with you with um, like some of the country music and, and even some rock. Like I've, I've started you way back, mm -hmm. way back when to bring you up to speed to right. where we are now. And um, even when we get up to more current country, I, I don't know too many artists that I would actually 
Because you listen to it. Like, I don't listen to it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Even yeah. that's saying, and, yeah. and Hank Williams, the album that I heard, Hank Williams Jr., mm-hmm. uh, he has a song talking about um, country, the new country mm-hmm. music and yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw mm-hmm. actually Hank Jr. Oh, Hank, Hank the Third. Hank the Third. Hank the Third. Yeah. Yeah. He, his song, and, well, Hank the Third, he's the most relevant now. And, mm-hmm. His shit is talking about how the, the, the industry didn't change. Yeah, country Even the country outside. music artists look at him like he ain't a country artist. Yeah. And he looked at them like, nah, y'all ain't a country artist. Right, right. right. When, when I was in the well, Navy, I had a cat uh, named Jerry Murr from Colorado, man, cowboy out of Colorado, mm-hmm. from the same squadron. And he was a big country music fan. Mm-hmm. And I would hang out with him every once in a while. Sure. And he got me turned on to Clint Black. Nice. And, um, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, who was the big dude at the time? The biggest country Garth? star Garth Brooks Garth, and um, you know so I really started listening to country music at that point uh-huh. and, and understood the story behind it yeah, right? right what they were saying yeah, right. and, and how it even related to me even though we come from different worlds yeah. in a sense but the story so reflected what I was going through at yeah. times he you just know? said the B&W show you know so <laughs> right different you know? worlds different worlds still have the same reflection That's right. you know so and, and that was a beautiful thing and I just actually on Facebook the other day told him I said you know we haven't all of us from the Scarlet Squadron are now starting to reconnect on Facebook. And um, and I told him, say, hey, yo, bro, you, you turned me on to country music, and I appreciate that now because it opened me up to mm-hmm. a whole other world yep. that I would have right. probably never yep. ventured right. down that path yep. and got to understand right. that as different as we may be, right. we're still the same. Yeah, right. You know, the only thing that. separating us, like I like to say, from getting along. Is ignorance. That's it. Exactly. Just break That's down it. the ignorance, people. That's it. And your best friend is sitting right by you. Right. 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 Just don't allow right. You just don't allow them. But it's what it is. So, do I have an I hate segment? No. Do I have a music segment, a music assignment? Because we're about to wrap up the show. Yeah. Yes. So, his music assignment this year, well, this year, <laughs> this one, is going to be Naughty by Nature. Naughty by Nature. Yes. We're going with Naughty's first one, 1993. 1993! That's how it came out of the Back to the anthem, huh? Yep, to the anthem. Down with OPP. Yep. You down with OPP? You know, so that's going to be my man. Is You know, as y'all don't know, you know, uh, the Flavor Unit, Mm -hmm. Queen Latifah, Naughty by Nature. Um, Who else we had in the Flavor Unit? Um, Man. He oh. really got a brother who wanna rack his brain. <laughs> yeah, right I'm gonna have to Google that up. Benny, but Benny Medina. Um Sean uh, King. Yeah, Shaq we King got was more from older. He was the owner of, 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 of a flavor unit there. with uh, Queen Latifah. Flavor unit. Flavor unit was Queen Latifah's joint. Yeah, and uh, Benny oh, Medina gotcha. and um and Shaq King. Right. And the groups I know Naughty was part of uh Queen Latifah. I thought there was another one, but that's him or there, little queen. That's somebody that's grown a grip. Yeah. Right, right. Personally, professionally, like we have seen certain people we have seen change from the music career to the, the acting. Like y'all don't know, MC Light, she's acting. A lot of people will be like, who's that chick? Yo, MC Light is the chick with the deep voice that you see now acting and she was on Empire. Yeah. She also was on um, a cop show. Uh, it was a, a, one of the, like, Brooklyn Nine or something, one of them funny cop shows. But MC Light is another one, that, another person that's basically just blew up. She's always been beautiful, but Finest she, woman in hip-hop, as soon man. as she left, like, like, right. And I don't think when she was, as she was fine in hip-hop, but that fine... Because she was an artist, it, it, right. it didn't stick to her being fine. No, when she started acting, mouse dropped. Like, who's this beautiful woman? That's MC Light, man. Ooh. Always been around there, but, you know, wine just gets, you know, what's they say? This is uh, the Odenberry Sweet of the Juice. Yeah. Right? It's an MC Light. Yeah, man. You know, so uh, that's my assignment for my man okay. going in. So, for next speaking month. of uh, old berries, mm-hmm. um, not that his name is Berry, but he's old. Uh, I'm giving you some Willie Nelson. Oh, Willie Nelson yeah. went broke. My yeah. weed through the Texas. I'm right giving there. you. Uh, I love Willie Nelson. It's, a, it's a greatest hits album because it's it's easy to do. I, um, I was looking to see what Willie Nelson album to to push her away, but 
I don't know if you know this. He actually has 107 studio albums. Yes, he does. God, dog. Yeah. So, yes, he does. To, so to pick a Willie Nelson album is like. Willie Nelson has it's like what? And seven yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like what's the best apple on the tree, right? Right. So and he, and even this, this greatest hits, it has ten songs. And even this is not. Um, I don't think is is a, a, a great representation. It's a good representation of Willie. You'll get a good taste of, of Willie from this. So, you know, it's got his top songs on the road again, uh, always on my mind. And one of my favorites, Poncho and Lefty with uh, Merle Haggard. Oh, that is a good song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good song. Uh, but there's no way the Jennings song is on here. Like, uh, uh, well, heroes have always been cowboys. Is he on that one? There's some great Willie and Jillian, you know, Willie, Willie and Waylon are always a right. great combo, but uh, it's a good start. Um, and he's an artist that's been around and forever. Mm-hmm. He's done stuff uh, for all of us, for Patsy Cline. Uh, obviously, he's a super uh, uh, artist in himself. He's worked uh, with Snoop. Mm-hmm. He's worked with Ray Charles. Did he work with Nelly? Mm-hmm. Who did Nelly do the country music with? I know he no, did. he does. Mm-hmm. Nelly does with. Um, no. Uh, Georgia, Florida line. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's one of my wife's favorite of okay. them. Uh, so, uh, again, going with the whole uh, people who are influential in country music and music in general, right. Willie Nelson's a great place to so, get going. So, Willie Nelson, to speak on him a little bit, he's a good, so he's, uh, he's a great, uh, uh, he's good, uh, he has some movies out. He's, he, yeah. He acts a lot. Yeah, he's a, so, one of my yeah. favorite Willie Nelson movies is called Barbarossa. Huh? Check it out, man. Check it out while you listen to his music. Check out Barbarossa. And, and Barbarossa. Uh, just a little side trivia. He's actually a really tiny guy. Yeah. I was in uh, my hometown of Prescott Valley uh, at, the, at the local Denny's. Uh, me and my buddy were sitting in the back of the, of the Denny's late night just because that's what you did in that town. Um, and we saw this guy come in about this big. I'm saying this big, not because I'm sitting down, but this, because that's <laughs> right. about how big he is. That's all big. So this guy, this big, coming in, dressed like Willie Nelson. Like, what the hell is this guy doing right, dressed right. like Willie Nelson for? Right. Next day we found out that was Willie Nelson stopping in on the Denny's to get some coffee. Hmm. That Going big. through, huh? Yeah. Ain't bad. Like, Damn, that's pretty cool. So, there you go. If I can give you two an assignment, I know I'm a guest today. I won't be back next month, maybe. Okay. Um, if I can give you both an assignment. Yeah. Health-wise. Eliminate one sugary product out of your diet. Your choice mm. for the next month. Okay. Challenge accepted. Eliminate one sugary product. So on the next show, we will advise at which sugary product we have been without for the month. And um, we'll follow up on that and let you know how that, how that change came about. So um, that does conclude our our new format show here. So I have to say we are of course three minutes over, but I think we did damn damn good. Yeah. I do want to send special thanks out again to my man King Saber for giving us five minutes yeah. of his time and sharing a story with us. Did you have anything you want to say to the people? I, I do. I want you to follow me at Healthwise Natural. I'll be launching out on Facebook later on this weekend. I'll tie it into the B&W show. Definitely do. So you'll be able to get there. It's an educational platform as far as your health goes. Mm -hmm. I'll be covering topics. Uh, Basically, what it boils down is that your food is your medicine. So everything that I'm going to talk about on that is going to be around food that's going to help ailments within your body. From from, um, uh, fungal infections to diabetes. There we go. From cancer to impotence. We'll be covering it on there. There Health-wise, natural. There we go. So we do, uh, yeah, we, we're definitely going to have them back. You know, hell, we, you know, it's partnerships. We might have have them come back as a reoccurring guest on the show. That's right. You know, where he can come in and enlighten us and give us a five-minute daily message on our health-wise and tips and yeah. stuff. So yeah, and um, next episode, we will be in the house of God. We will be in the house of God. Yes, that is right. House of God. Wiseman Entertainment is going to be our studio spot. Right. Uh, so uh, just be on the lookout for that. Do have some shout outs. Do want to thank uh, for giving us your time today. Shout out to Terry, Nini, Nina. I should say not Nina. I like to call her Nina Nine, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, William, uh, you know, wifey out there, love you. 
you know, uh, you have any uh, shout outs you want to go? Yeah, and I saw share? Stephanie Streeter joined for a little bit. Yeah, so thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, appreciate um, that. Of course, uh, as always, my wife. Thank you for being right. my supporter. And uh, I'm choking up here. <laughs> my wife. I know you guys are those <laughs> like okay. So you know, before we was doing shout outs as people coming. Ah, shout out, shout. So we're just gonna go ahead and change it up a little bit and just go ahead and say you know just give the love. Yeah. You know, at the end, so we can keep the yeah. show going, stay in the format yeah. and everything like that. But um, until next time, just be looking out for us on the next show. Yeah. It's going to be here it's, uh, last Saturday in September. Mm -hmm. do want to tell you the love and peace. And watch out for uh, A&M and the PM. A&M and the PM. That's tomorrow. Mm -hmm.